Hare Krishna Maharaj, I apologize for a delay of eight minutes. I'm so sorry. But now we're all set. And after this introduction, I will mute myself. You will not hear me, but I will be translating you simultaneously. So your English speaking disciples can hear you in English and the Russian speaking will hear you in uh, uh, Russian uh, parallel. Yes, so today today you're speaking with the best Sankirtana uh, devotees in St. Petersburg. Uh, they are uh, all working adults and they're going on the weekend for the Sankirtana. So I'm hoping that after your talk, inspirational talk, they will just, you know, fly out to the streets and give the Krishna consciousness to all St. Petersburg. Uh, so, should, should we go for longer than a half hour to make up for the delay? Uh, we have time. You just, you know, say what you want to say. Please leave some space for the uh, questions because they always have questions. It's up to you. Up to you how it will go. Yeah, my time is is unlimited. I don't have any restrictions. So Thank you, you so can... much. They, they have hour and a half. They have hour and a half. Okay. Until two, uh, two thirds. It's 2.30 their time. Uh, my time. Uh, hour and a half. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. okay I'm, I'm muting. You always have questions. It's there was just one announcement. Uh, thanks, Lavangala Pratha Mataji. Uh, Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, as Mataji said, uh, Guru Maharaj is going to give class on book distribution. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, please, uh, you can ask towards the end of the class. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, over to you, please. Yeah, keep the questions only when there's no more questions from the Russian side. Yes, that's also, yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, like first, uh, if it's po possible, it will be great uh, if uh, we give priority to Russian Sankirtan devotees to ask the questions towards the end of the class first. And if time permits, then uh, uh, God family can also ask the questions. Thank you. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutalai Shri Makti Bhakti Viranta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswateve Gauravani Kuttarine Nirvishesha Sunyavari Pasyatya De Satarine Pancha Kalpa Thiruvishya Kripa Sindhuve Pacha Patitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Anit Dwaita Gadadhar Shivasari Gaur Bhaktarinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <clears throat> So there are different ways to show benefit to the living entities and different ways that we also find benefit in ourselves. We see people in different areas of life they want to help other people by distributing food by opening shelters for people to live to give kind of clothing and medical care to others all of these are material welfare work and it goes on in society as a, a way to show concern and compassion to others who are in need. But all of these fall short of actually helping the person who is actually beyond the body, and that is the soul. Therefore, material welfare work is like cleaning the cage and forgetting about the bird inside. <clears throat> So when we come to understand how to do good to others, it comes right down to knowledge. Or we might say that knowledge, <clears throat> which it can be applied in every circumstance in life, philosophical knowledge, spiritual knowledge, and even knowledge that is transcendental. And that is found in Srila Prabhupada's books. By giving this knowledge to others, you're actually, one is actually doing the greatest form of welfare work. Why? Because people don't know why they are suffering. They're suffering because their direction in life is wrong. <laughs> They're thinking that by adjusting the material energy, they will be happy. 
but you can adjust the material energy eternally and the material energy will still trap one in the cycle of birth, death, disease, and old age. To give freedom from birth, death, disease, and old age, the first step is transcendental knowledge. For that knowledge, which helps one to understand who they actually are, something else beyond this body. When we as devotees, we understand that principle that we are a spirit soul, we are not this body, we are part and parcel of Krishna, and we have an intimately loving relationship with Krishna. That's the foundation for all other knowledge. Once that foundation is established, then we can build various types of knowledge based on that coming from that foundation. For instance, people in the material world are fearful. And one of the greatest fears and the fear of death, everyone has this anxiety, when will this body end? They call it death. But we know from transcendental knowledge, and we also know from the experiences of people who have transcendental knowledge, that death is simply the end of the body, but not at the end of our existence. The one who develops that knowledge can be free. <laughs> In other words, they're no longer under the influence of the suffering forms of material energy. They're free. In other words, they're on the spiritual platform. So whatever happens to the body, it doesn't disturb them because they know it doesn't happen to me. I am transcendental. I am different than that body. So that is the essence of what Srila Prabhupada's books are made out of. Of course, there's another part to that essence, who is who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead? What is his nature? What is, he, what is his activities? What is our relationship with him? Now these two forms of knowledge, our personal identity and identity of Krishna is the highest form of, of knowledge that we can give. And Srila Prabhupada books are the, uh, the epitome or the height of that knowledge. So, we want to do good to others because that is explained as being the nature of human life. Prabhupada calls that paropaka. Paropaka means to do benefit to others. And that is the purpose of the human form of life. But people who have that understanding in the material world don't know how to do benefit of others, nor do they know how to take care of them on their own self because they missed the main point. And the main point is that we are not this body, we are something else. So this is what Srila Prabhupada has been giving to us continuously through his lectures and especially in his books. Prabhupada would ex explain how important it is to distribute his books. In one <clears throat> discussion, he said to one person, what is the use of your three minute speech? You can give a nice speech and uh, we can speak so nice philosophical teachings. But if someone gets a book, then that knowledge stays with them. They have it available. And then they have the opportunity to benefit from that, always. So these books are so valuable because they are the difference between life and death, between happiness and suffering between uh, uh, activities that are beneficial and activities that are unbeneficial. So we have this knowledge, we've been given this knowledge. Now, along with giving this knowledge to others in the form of distributing Srila Prabhupada's books, it is incumbent upon us also to very carefully read and study these books because when we're out there distributing these books also, it is important for us to uh, have faith and the knowledge of what we are giving to others. Prabhupada was very clear on that in 1976 in Sridham Mayapur. He was lecturing on the importance of distributing his books and he was somewhat chastising the devotees for not taking time to read 
but simply to distribute. It's important, of course, to distribute it. It is the highest form of welfare work, as we mentioned, but when we have that knowledge and we are living that knowledge, then when we approach people, we have more potency to deliver that knowledge to them. When you are living what you are teaching, then at the same time, that element of knowledge and conviction and lifestyle is transmitted in the interaction when we give people their books. So both, we should need to study and understand these books. So let's assume that many of us who are listening to this lecture are already well versed in that knowledge. And we have conviction that this, this knowledge that we're giving to others is valuable. It will benefit them. It will help them overcome their suffering. And it will also um, create within their lives the opportunity to engage in devotional service. <coughs> but another thing, which is very much important about distributing Srila Prabhupada's books, is how much time and emphasis that Srila Prabhupada gave to, to composing these books. He would write the translations to the Bhaktivedanta purports at the time when the devotees were sleeping. Prabhupada would get up around midnight and then begin his translations and giving his Bhakti Vedanta purports in such a way that he was always thinking in terms of how will a Western mentality understand this knowledge. So Prabhupada gave time, energy, and a lot of effort to putting together his books in such a way he wanted to make it as perfect as he could so it would have the maximum amount of effect when it would reach the conditioned souls. And therefore, he wanted us to distribute his books because he understood that there is no better way to do benefit to others than transcendental knowledge. <clears throat> As we were saying, when everything else is gone, transcendental knowledge remains. And that transcendental knowledge is so valuable because it's the difference between eternal life and rotation in the cycle of birth and death, which means unlimited amounts of suffering. So um, Prabhupada received that instructions from his spiritual master in 1936 when he was with him at Radha Kund. It was practically the last meeting that Prabhupada had with his spiritual master and Bhakti Siddhanta very gravely, seriously, with all uh, concern said, if you ever get money, print books. This is the Brihat Mardanga. This will make a difference in the lives of the population in the world. And Prabhupada knew, <clears throat> he also, you would use that, that example, how Communism spread so fast across Europe because the uh, communists were distributing their literature by the millions. They were very, very enthusiastic to get that knowledge out everywhere. And therefore, communists spread through the written word. And Prabhupada also understood this is a very good way to uh, distribute this knowledge through books and through distributing these books anywhere and everywhere. And one of the benefits that we see that preaching allows in book distribution where it doesn't allow in other places is these books can go anywhere. It was a one book, I think you all know it, the history of Russia, just one book that Shamsundar somehow or other brought in with along with Srila Prabhupada to Russia. And that book was copied by many and then distributed everywhere. And that's how the entire Russian uh, Yatra started to develop simply on one Bhagavad Gita and one person. And that was Anantashanti, that one person. And so Srila Prabhupada uh, understood that yes, 
wherever we can't go, the books can go, or wherever we don't have the opportunity to go, the books can go. So these books are so valuable. They can go anywhere and they can go everywhere. And when you're out there distributing books, sometimes you think, well, will this person read the book? Maybe, maybe not. But if they keep the book and they may find that someone in their family or a fa friend will come and pick up the book and read it. <laughs> I remember I can narrate one particular story that that I was directly involved with in New Vrindavan, I'm sorry, in Chicago in 1995 it was. I was the, uh, I was staying as the resident sannyasi in the uh, Chicago temple. And one young man, kind of a hippie-like young man came in and he had a copy of the Bhagavad Gita with him. And he wanted me to uh, take him to the New Vrindavan community. He wanted to join the movement. Now, I started to ask him a little bit about his experiences. And he told me that one day his father <clears throat> was cleaning out all his old books and taking it to one bookshop. Because in America, you can take your own books and go to these bookshops and they'll give you something, some money, small amount in relationship to the book. And uh, people have a lot of books, so they do that. So while this, this father of this young boy was taking out the books, he noticed that on the very top of the box where all the books were being carried, he saw this unusual and very interesting book. And he asked his father, can I read it? So his father gave it to him. It was Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita. So he started to read it and he became very much absorbed in it. And now he was trying to think, well, where is the society that's connected with this book? But there was no information in the book at the time. And so he kept that in mind and he kept reading it and reading it. And one day when he was walking along the street, a book distributor came up to him and uh, presented the Bhagavad Gita. Oh, he said, I've been looking for you people. I have one copy myself. Please, do you have a temple here? And he was directed to the temple and that's how I met him. And eventually he joined right after that without even having any other training in Krishna consciousness. He entered the Nubandavan community and later on he became initiated devotee. So this is uh, the power of book distribution. There are hundreds of, not hundreds, thousands of incidents in our Krishna conscious society, how the books have miraculously transformed the lives of many, even people who unknowingly uh, didn't want anything to do with spiritual life, but somehow or other, the book made a big difference in their life. So this is a great service. And of course, now with the uh, more of a left, I don't know how it is in Russia, but some countries people are somewhat limited and restricted. We also have the opportunity to send books out by mail order also. This is another way to distribute books through the mail by setting up a, uh, advertisement for our books in different ways and ask people to uh, you know, send in money and we'll send them whatever book they request. So um, we should not be limited by the present social environment. We can also do it through mail order and various other forms of indirect <clears throat> contact with the living beings. But if you're out there on the streets, always remain enthusiastic, always remain fixed in the idea that I am out here on behalf of my spiritual master. I'm out here on behalf of Srila Prabhupada. I am their representative in order to reach these conditioned souls with this transcendental knowledge. And we all know, especially all of you know, that when someone takes a book, there is great satisfaction that comes within the heart and mind. <clears throat> so we want to uh, 
please Srila Prabhupada by distributing his books. And at the same time, we understand. And Srila Prabhupada said it. He said, in all the forms of preaching that we may do, book distribution is foremost. Because if they have these books, they can read it, they can understand it, and they can also come in contact with devotees, or many of them even just like, for instance, I, uh, I do preaching in jails. And one of the biggest things that we do in our preaching efforts is to send in books. So we make contact with various uh, inmates in the jail cells. And then uh, if they get a copy of Prabhupada's books, then they become interested in receiving more. And the book doesn't stay in one place. It usually goes from inmate to inmate. And uh, a lot of times we find many others who came in contact with another inmate, got a Srila Prabhupada's books, and they begin chanting, and they actually begin preaching to their friend, friends and fellow inmates about Krishna consciousness. So out of all the forms of preaching in the jails that we do, I mean, we don't do very much. We sometimes we go we visit and we give a little lecture in certain places, but book distribution has really revolutionized preaching in the jails. So here's another example of how uh, effective book distribution is in reaching, uh, because Prabhupada's books are none different than Prabhupada. <laughs> so that we should always remember that when we're distributing Prabhupada's books, we're actually for carrying Srila Prabhupada with us in the form of his books. So when they receive that book, they are actually getting Srila Prabhupada in the most direct way because the connection with the spiritual master is through his words. And these, these books are nicely composed. Um, and when people read them, try to understand them, and gradually um, apply some of those things in their life, then they find, oh, this knowledge is the best of all knowledge. <laughs> so we have a great mission, uh, especially particularly now in today's world, people are more and more interested in trying to find some solution to the present social problems, medical problems, whatever problems are going on. And now people are more interested. I am here in Slovenia and the devotees do Harinam regularly here every day. Um, and then they also go out with books along with the Harinam. The book distributors accompany the Harinam at the same time. And that has a lot of effect when people hear the chanting of the holy names and then they're approached by book distributors at the same time. It has a great effect. So we have one devotee here who just in about oh, four or five hours, he distributed 200 books uh, while he was uh, accompanying the Harinam. So yeah, uh, when you add Harinam to book distribution, I'm not sure how it is in Russia. I think there might be some limitations on how much you can do in Harinam. But if that's possible, you can see there will be a greater effect in distributing Srila Prabhupada's books. <laughs> so these are some things we can think about. Uh, try to understand, even if it's difficult. I know sometimes we run into difficulties with legalities, with the, uh, you know, with the uh, restrictions or whatever else is there or the weather may not always be so easy to deal with. Still, it's a, it's a sacrifice. And by making that sacrifice, we're actually uh, paving our way back home, back to Godhead, because Prabhupada said, anyone who distributes my books will go back home, back to Godhead. He meant seriously distributing his books. And so this is a very uh, important Part of our preaching is book distribution because distributing transcendental knowledge is distributing Krishna in the form of uh, transcendental knowledge. <laughs> oh.
Okay, so these are some things we can think about. I can stop there and we can see if there's any questions. If there's no questions, we'll try to speak a little bit more and I'll tell some stories related to book distribution. But if you would like to ask questions now, we can open it up. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, if you have any questions or comments related no, to no, book distribution, related no, no, to. No. No, the, the, the Russian devotees are first. <laughs> yes, yes, Guru Maharaj, I'm just asking. So, Mataji said, like, whatever, like, will be here, she will be just translating. So, sorry, I just, she just asked her notes. Adibal. So, we're waiting for them because they are hearing us with about the five seconds delay. So, uh, on YouTube, we're just one second waiting for the Urukrama Prabhu. Is there Urukrama Prabhu? Yes, Kikita Vaprosatam. Urukrama Chaitanya Prabhu? Да, мы на связи. Вопросы у вас есть? Нет, мы вот, если... Нет, мы с удовольствием послушаем вопросы других преданных. Mm -hmm. uh, so Maharaj, they, they want to hear your stories or if other people have some questions, they, they want to hear more stories and things like that. Okay, I can think of some amazing stories or... that book distribution has, has shown in the past. There is one story which I had heard many times and I was... Okay, so I'll begin. Um, there was one young man. He was feeling very depressed. And so he was thinking, what is the value of living anymore? He was suffering so much that he decided that it's time to end my life. And so he made a plan to end his life. And uh, so he drove his, his vehicle, which was a van, into one parking lot, a shopping center. And he arranged for the, uh, the exhaust fumes, instead of going out the back, to come back into the cabin. And that's the way he would end, end his life. So he started to do that and while he was sitting, just beginning, there was one book distributor came into the parking lot and saw him sitting in the van and knocked on the window and offered to sell him a book or talk to him about a book. The man wasn't interested, he just waved the book distributor away. The book distributor took the book and placed it on the windshield of the van and left. And then the man got curious, and so he rolled down his window, reached out, took the book and started to read. He was just curious what it was. And then there was one chapter, it was a small little paperback book about the importance of how, how to become happy. It was the chapter on what is real happiness. And so he was reading that, and you know, obviously he's in a situation where he's miserable. So that became an interest. After reading for some time, he decided not to go ahead with his suicide. And then he, was, he wound up reading the whole book. And then at the end, he found in the very back of the book, there was a listing of the temples. And then he... Uh, If you can hear our kirtan now in the background, that's our Harinam party just going out. Um, and then he found a listing of the temples, found the closest temple and came and told his whole story and said, I want to become a devotee. 
So this is interesting how book distribution actually prevented a man from committing suicide simply by receiving one of Prabhupada's books. <laughs> Prabhupada's books are very powerful. There was one story in Italy also, which was quite interesting. The trains in Italy going from place to place, they stopped for about five minutes to unload and uh, bring more passengers on. So while what the train had stopped in one place, one book distributor, a girl, she came and onto the train to distribute books for a few minutes. So she approached one man. The man was not at all favorable. In fact, he was quite angry. So he grabbed the book out of the, the girl's hand and then pushed her out the door. And she actually fell. Uh, and then, of course, he was on the train and the train went. Um, many years later, I don't know how many, but years later, uh, that same man came down with cancer and he was, uh, he had terminal cancer. So he was looking for something religious to take shelter of. So he went into his library looking for something Christian and he just happened to have that same book that that girl gave him. So he picked up the book, which I guess was a Bhagavad Gita. I'm not sure which, which, which one it was. He started reading and reading and reading and reading. And he became so uh, transformed simply by reading one of Prabhupada's books that he decided to go to the temple. He found the address in the temple. And it's interesting, when he came to the temple, he knocked onto the door on the outside of the temple and that same girl, <laughs> who he pushed out the door, <laughs> opened the door to the temple. When he saw her, he immediately fell to the ground uh, in offering his obeisances to her. And of course, after that, he very sorry, very profusely apologized for everything he did and he, he thanked her for giving him the book. So that, of course, later on, he, he had to leave his body because of the disease, but he left it in a different state of consciousness. <laughs> uh, there are many, many stories. There's one very powerful story in one country where we can't uh, pre practice Krishna consciousness even today. And uh, we were in the jails there as a Hindu chaplain. Sometimes they have chaplains for the different religions. And so one of our devotees applied for the job as Hindu chaplain. So he got the job. And he was teaching Bhagavad Gita to some of the inmates. So one day he uh, went to the administration of the jail and said, is there anybody that you think would be interested in this knowledge that we have? And they understood, yes, it's coming from India. So they found one Indian man. Now this Indian man was, was um, sentenced to be executed within a few months. So they sent him to our class and the man, he had always denied that he never, he never committed the crime. He was saying that, you know, I was, you know, I'm, I'm a victim, I didn't, I didn't do it. And when his parents would come, he would always, you know, complain to them that he's a victim and this is unfair. And so he was in a very bad mood. But when he came to our class, he, he became a little interested in hearing the discussions on Bhagavad Gita. So he started coming regularly. And after a couple of months, he completely changed. And he actually admitted he committed the crime. When his parents came to see him, they couldn't understand. He changed so much. They asked, wow, how did he change? And then he was reading Gita like regularly. In fact, he would keep the Gita with him all the time. And then it was time for him to be executed. So when they were taking him away for his execution, he had asked the uh, 
the executioners if he could carry the Bhagavad Gita with him because he said, when I, when I die, I want to have his Bhagavad Gita with me so I can have it in my next life. <laughs> that was his understanding. And so they said, fine. Mm -hmm. So they were carrying him, they were taking him away. And they described to us later, they told uh, the Hindu chaplain devotee that we always have a hard time. You know, they all, people always resist. We have to carry them, we have to tie them up, we have to do it. So many force them to come. But this boy was just, he was just walking along, not fearful at all, waving goodbye to his fellow inmates. He was completely free from all fear. He had understood deeply what Srila Prabhupada had said in his books. He never met a devotee. Of course, he was at the class, but he never really engaged in any kind of devotional service before and uh, never came in contact with any of the books until that time. So this is an amazing story. I actually wrote that story up and we published it in one of, one of our books uh, entitled uh, uh, Forbidden Voices, which is a book about preaching in jails. Mm -hmm. So these are a few of the many, many amazing stories that go on in the life of book distributors. I'm sure some of you out there have your own experiences that are quite extraordinary. When we come in contact with people there's a whole different energy that develops around us. And that, that energy is Srila Prabhupada's blessings as we uh, go out and just try to distribute his books. Uh, Maharaj, at this time, I would like to offer your disciples to ask some questions, if possible, related to um, uh, book distribution because I guess my hosts are a little bit intimidated by, by so many uh, disciples in Zoom. So maybe we just give them some time to gather their thoughts and if they have some questions, they will let me know. But for, for now, uh, dear English speaking devotees, if you have some questions for uh, your Guru Maharaj, uh, please go ahead, unmute yourself and ask a question. Vrindavan Nath, do we have any questions? <laughs> um, not on chat, Guru Maharaj, but uh, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, if you have any questions, as Mataji said, while she is collecting questions from Russian Sankirtan devotees, if you have any questions or any relations or any comment, please do unmute yourself. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All wish love, Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, for book distribution, I always think you know, uh, there is lots of courage. Один вопрос появился, можно мы спросим? There is lots of courage. Oh, Prabhu, она уже начала спрашивать. Сейчас я ее переведу. Sorry, if you have questions, you can go ahead, Mataji. No, no, I, I apologize. Yes, they, they have a question, but we will wait. Please, you already started. I apologize. Please go ahead. No. Yeah. So I just wanted to ask Guru Maharaj that you know. Простите, у нас вот вопрос возник. У Рукрамачитания Прабу, пожалуйста, подождите, она уже начала задавать вопрос. У Рукрамачитания Прабу, вы меня слышите в зуме? Пожалуйста, подождите. Она начала задавать вопрос, после нее мы зададим. Хорошо? Yes, Mataji, I apologize. I apologize sincerely, please. So, Guru Maharaj, I have a question that, you know, we, we always like, you know, in London as well, Manar, Soho, we all distribute lots of books, but uh, we don't see result as it was at Prabhupada's time. That Prabhupada's time when books were distributed, there were many devotees were made, but that transformation is not seen at the current uh, time. So why, what is lacking in the book distribution in this time and the Prabhupada's time? I know Prabhupada is not here, but many of his very powerful, you know, potent disciples are here and devotees are putting their, you know, heart and soul in book distribution. So why why is there is not as much difference as it was at Prabhupada's time? Well, 
I think to understand what it was like in Prabhupada's time, you'd really have to really study that because it wasn't always like, you know, people were coming forward. Um, there was an intense <coughs> and strong enthusiasm to distribute Prabhupada's books at the time. The social environment is completely changed since then. And that's another factor that people are a little bit more, a little bit more open in those days because of the time factor. That was the America during the hippie era when a lot of the people who came to Prabhupada through book distribution were people who had rejected the social, political and economic values of their parents and were searching. People are not kind of searching now, but not they're not rejecting. They're simply searching for something, but without rejecting. So people will take books and book distribution is still going on in terms of that. But actually people joining, that's a whole process where there should be not only, you know, you distribute the books, but you connect with the person by getting their contact also. You can also do that directly by asking or indirectly by putting different cards or leaflets in the book where they can uh, sign up. And that happened to me, one of my disciples, I was doing book distribution at one class. And after receiving the book, there was a little follow up in the book and then he followed up and then he came in contact and then eventually came to the temple and actually became an initiated devotee. So there has to, there should be also a follow up program with book distribution in any way we can do it. That's one way, but again, I, I mentioned the social environment has changed tremendously and people now are not embracing a new lifestyle. They're just trying to adjust their present lifestyle in order to uh, somehow or other find some relief from the miseries they're undergoing. So it, it's a different era, a lot different. And uh, now, I mean, years ago, of course in Russia, it's also difficult to distribute books in, pl in different places in Russia uh, because of there are laws that are restricting that. And that was what it was like in the old days in the 60s too. We ran into a lot of opposition from authorities, a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. It helps. Mataji, you can go ahead. Urukramachitanya, Prabhu, Zadavat Pajasta, Vapros. Zoom in. Maharaj, I'm sorry. They're hearing us with a delay. That's why, okay. you know, I hope. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> а как называется книжка в оригинале? Вот эти запрещенные голоса. Uh, forbidden Voices. Forbidden Voices. Mm -hmm. That's a book that I, I published about uh, preaching in prisons. There is one, there's one devotee in Russia. Um, hmm. Let me think of her name. Uh, she, uh, yeah, she's in Russia and she's done some translation of my books into Russian. She translated the, the first book I did, which was called Holy Jail. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Хари Кришна, Хари Кришна Мата же такой вопрос Мухараджа, просто просто чтобы распространять книги, нужно ну, по крайней мере, мне очень хорошо понимать ценность э, именно книг Шива Пропада. Я чувствую, что мне не хватает этого понимания. Вот э, как, э, как его получить? Окей. Махарадж, the question is that I clearly understand what, that for book distribution I have to understand the value of what I'm distributing. But I have a very little understanding. Could you please help me? to un clearly understand how valuable are those books are. Well, we can see that many devotees who are now devotees, many persons who are now devotees are devotees because they received the book. <laughs> That's true. My first experience with a devotee back in 1970 was uh, I was approached by a book distributor and they gave me uh, a pamphlet along with a small book. So, uh, and if you go down the list of devotees who are now devotees, you find many of them came in contact with Prabhupada's movement through book distribution. So that's how valuable it is. <laughs> it's the book that, that brought people in And it's the philosophy that the book is teaching that keeps people in. <laughs> now, there's so many devotees who are, you know, now devotees because of book distribution. So that's how valuable it is. <laughs> It's the main way to reach the conditioned souls with this knowledge. It's the main way to make people uh, understand what is our movement and what is the value of our movement. <laughs> yeah. But when you're out there distributing books, when you see someone take a book and they're, you know, they're happy and they go away, you can see you just created a, you know, you just, you brought someone to the path of spiritual life and may not have been able to get that benefit, but because you were there with the book, they were benefited. <laughs> Yeah, we can't underestimate how, how valuable this knowledge is and how important it is to get this knowledge out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the difference between life and death, really. <laughs> I think we can also understand more how valuable it is when we, when we read and study Srila Prabhupada's books and we can see how it improves our own Krishna consciousness. It inspires our intelligence. It awakens with us the knowledge that brings, brings devotion. Our own experience is another example on how much, how we can understand how 
valuable book distribution is. Okay, Maharaj, I have a question. Please do tell what kind of qualities are necessary to be able to distribute Srila Prabhupada books throughout your life, your entire life. What are the qualities? That are necessary to be a book distributor for life. One, this is not a quality, but it's a, like a state of consciousness that how much it pleases Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> we always can remember that. That will transform into the qualities that we need to distribute. And one of them is that we should be very humble when we're out there. Because if we're proud or arrogant, or then uh, it doesn't really uh, attract people. Humble means that we are completely dependent on Krishna's mercy, on, on our spiritual master's mercy in order to do the service. So that, that's, that's a form of empowerment. We become empowered when we become more dependent on their mercy. And that dependence is understood that we pray my dear Srila Prabhupada, my dear Guru Maharaj, Krishna, I'm out here trying to give this knowledge to people in general. So please inspire me to say the right things, to be in the right mood. We can pray for the qualities, we can pray for the proper mood. All of these things are part of developing our Krishna consciousness. So, Maharaj, next question is, how do you personally get ready for Sankirtana? That means, how do you, for example, today you're going on Sankirtana, how do you prepare to go on Sankirtana? Well, right now, I'm not actively distributing books. I'm going out on Harinams along with the book distributors. But... Um, uh, in the past, I've distributed books, but not presently. I'm just doing Harinam Sankirtan. But preparing ourselves means being enthusiastic for the service. <laughs> if we look at it in a material way, we think, oh, well, I could be using my time in a different way. I could get some more, I could do other things and get other things done that I need to get done or. Uh, then we won't really be so enthusiastic to go out. And if we do go out, we're just thinking, when can it end so I can go back? So preparing ourselves means to be ready to, uh, you know, we have something to give. And the more we are actually feeling the happiness of what we're doing, that oh, this is this is a great way to uh, help the conditioned soul. This is a great way to please Srila Prabhupada. Uh, if we have some enthusiasm, that enthusiasm inspires people to come. If we're not enthusiastic, we can't attract anyone, hardly. And Krishna will send. Krishna sends people to us when he sees that there we are enthusiastic to distribute. So that enthusiasm is important.
Maharaj, may I ask a question, a personal question? Sure. Okay. So um, I can support book distributors. I love book distributors. I cook for book distributors. I can organize anything for book distributors. But uh, personally, I think I really suck at Sankirtana. So I feel that <laughs> my um, abilities are better spent in supporting them than actually doing the book distribution because I can organize the way that the Prabhupada books will go more in a better way and the devotees will be taken care of. Do I have to still overstep over my natural limitations and go on book distribution even though, you know, um, maybe the the rest of my service will suffer but uh, i will distribute maybe one book but the rest of the people could have distributed hundreds if i would have you know stayed at home cooked and took care of them so what to do in that situation give me just one second i will translate into russian Okay, Maharaj, go ahead, answer. Yeah, obviously, when you want to organize a particular service, there are different services that are related to that service. So being a backup with cooking and organizing is, is important. Otherwise, it doesn't develop beyond a certain point. So your service obviously is important, it's needed. And because you're good at it, or you like it, then you continue on that. So I don't think, I think that either directly or indirectly doing book distribution is the same thing. Because as they say, sometimes we use in the, a cliche, an, ar an army runs on its stomach. So in order to feed the people who are doing the books, somebody has to do that cooking. Somebody has to organize the way it goes out. Somebody has to make changes when, you know, when there's need for improvement. All that has to be done. But then I would also add one thing, and this is just a question to you. Have you ever done book distribution at all? Yes, I have. I have uh, been distributing books. Okay, so you have that experience. So you know what it's like, but now your service is more connected with the, the supportive aspect, which is which is non-different. Whether you support it or do it, in it's one particular service. So you shouldn't feel like, well, because I'm not there out there directly, and then you know I'm not really doing much. No, it's all important. Just like, you know, I don't do book distribution, but I can try to preach to the book distributors and try to inspire them. And, you know, the preachers do that. Prabhupada wasn't out there. Well, Prabhupada did distribute his books a few times, but, you know, he was the force that inspired others to do the book distribution. So that's, um, that's needed also. It's required. So you shouldn't feel like, well, you know, I'm not doing anything or I'm not doing anything important. It's all part of the same service. Okay, so Maharaj, while I'm waiting on the Russian questions, I would like to open the floor for all the English speaking attendees today if they have some questions for Maharaj. So we don't have any questions, Guru Maharaj, on chat, but dear devotees, if you have any questions, please unmute yourself.
Well, if someone can talk about their book distribution experiences, that would be nice also. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, so I can say something about book distribution as I've been, uh, not for long, but I've been trying to do something a little bit uh, um, in book marathon time and sometime in August. But uh, we do door-to-door -door book distribution. We do book stall, book tables. And uh, even Nath Prabhu comes out very enthusiastically. We, you know, uh, distribute in pubs, restaurants. We go out shop to shop. And uh, it's really amazing activity. And it just, I always personally felt that if we have a desire uh, to distribute book and uh, especially for the pleasure of Srila Prabhupada, then uh, I have noticed that uh, Srila Prabhupada empower you because from the starting, I have always, since I have joined the movement, I have always been very nervous about book distribution. And in my mind, I always thought that this is the one service which I can never, ever, ever do it. I can never come out and talk to people, strangers, and give them a book and ask them to give some Lakshmi. And uh, from last three, four years, Krishna has been so kind, and especially Shila Prabhupada has been very, very kind to whatever little, like I'm not saying anything major we have done, achieved anything, but even one book has gone out, and that is complete mercy of Shila Prabhupada. That, uh, and you can feel that empowerment from Shila Prabhupada and you feel that he's, you know, standing right next to you when you're knocking on the door and you're, you're very, very nervous that who will come out from the door and, you know, someone might scold you, scream at you, what are you doing here? I don't want anything. And, you know, you are ready to face anything when he's standing right next to you. You feel he's there to help you, protect you and bless you and let you serve him, actually. So it's it just all you need is a desire to serve Shila Prabhupada and he helps you basically that's all I want to say thank you very much yeah very nice realization that is very powerful it overcomes all anxieties and fears and it gives you complete surety that what you're doing is the best yeah nice very very nice Hare Krishna Maharaj, um, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Maharaj, on behalf of Diptesh, um, I would like to share a couple of stories, which is an experience for me, but it was, um, it was done by Diptesh. Uh, Mataji, I'm sorry, we have a couple questions. Can I, can I ask a couple questions and then we will share the stories? Is it okay? Yes, sure. Please okay. go. Ahead. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Um, Maharaj, the question is, um, what is the difference when you are distributing books directly on the street in comparison to distributing online? What are the major differences? <laughs> Distributing online. Hmm. Hmm. Well, online distribution really means uh, I'm not so much for familiar with online distribution. All I know is that you can arrange things online where you can send people the books, but uh, I guess the, the the difference is that it seems to be less personal when you're online. You're talking to more like a machine. There's a person behind there, but it some seems to be less direct. Um, but the activity is the same, and that's that's the essence. Um, I think you. I think one of the psychological differences is that uh, when we're out there on the streets, it forces us to take more shelter. 
with a Prabhupada and for begging for the mercy. Maybe we're when we're online, we feel a little less, uh, you know, uncomfortable about, or even a, a little less challenged about what we're doing. But the idea is to get the books out, whether you get it out online or get it out on the streets. The goal is the same. So it's important, whatever way, whatever means you use for book distribution, the goal is to somehow or other think of ways to get it out. <laughs> okay, Maharaj, one more question. So how during the book distribution, we can hook the person into the, his heart? How to talk to his soul? <laughs> Well, first, when you start to see the person you're talking to is not the body, but is the soul that is situated in that body or you're coming in contact with. And when you have that, that understanding, at least initially, when you come in contact with a person, then from there, you just distribute, then you do, then you just speak. You know they're going to they're going to interact with their mind and with their body, with their senses, with their intelligence, and that's that is just normal and natural. But we should know that you know this message is the message for the soul. This knowledge is this knowledge for the soul. In other words, it'll awaken the soul to devotion. So, you know, the Bhagavad Gita explains that one should see every living entity according to their relationship with Krishna. In other words, they are spiritual beings. But still, we deal with each other on this level, but in our hearts and minds, we know that I am not this body and they are not their bodies either. We all are spirit, soul, part and parcel of Krishna. Maharaj, the usual question, how to ask for a good donation? Because people give uh, very, uh, you know, small amounts of money for our books. How to ask for a good donation? <laughs> Well, <laughs> I think it depends on the person you're talking to, <laughs> what you want to say in that situation. Um, you could uh, continue to glorify the importance of the books and how valuable and how, how rare these books are. Not only valuable, but they're all rare. Prabhupada also said, these are the rarest of all books. So you can continue to glorify the book and try to increase, uh, inspire them to give more. You can ask for a little more, but you should always be polite and not, uh, you know, demanding. Maharaj, uh, one more question. So uh, we have uh, some book distributors who are very nice in public, but when they come back to the temple, they turn into those people you don't want to you know, be around. Uh, how to deal with them? <laughs> how to deal with them? Can you tell them to go back out on book distribution. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to respond to that question. <laughs> I don't know what it means when they come back that they, they turn into like Irani Kashi poor or something. <laughs> what is the transformation that's happening? In other words, they're, they're very, uh, Prabhupada said, he said we should be a lion on the chase and a lamb at home. 
So lamb at home means very sweet with the devotees, but when we're out there, we're enthusiastic to uh, inspire people to take the books. So, uh, yeah. Maharaj, uh, next question is, uh, when uh, the good book distributors are not supported by local authorities, uh, that authorities are saying that they are, you know, giving people books by uh, any means and that they should be inviting people for the seminars and then through seminars, maybe distribute books or directly criticize the book distributors for, you know, spending two seconds and shoving the book. Sometimes they even say those words, shoving the book. So um, when they don't give support of any kind uh, for the book distribution, what should we do? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I think that's a that's a administration problem. It's not a philosophical problem. I'm not sure I can manage that one here from this position I'm in right now. Uh, the thing is, we have to learn, learn to cooperate together. I think the point the point is cooperation. So if there's some dichotomy between what the temple authorities want and what the book distributors want, you need to discuss it and work it out instead of just letting it go on and acting like it doesn't matter or it may, it may even get worse. Try to work it out. Whenever there's a problem, try to work it out by, by uh, respectful discussions. And Prabhupada said our movement's based on love and trust. If we don't have that amongst each other, then how can we really make a difference with people who are not devotees? We have to somehow or other, you know, learn how to work together. We can disagree, but we can still, we still, still have to work together. Maharaj, what is the easiest book for you to distribute? Was or is, what is the easiest book? And uh, physically, what did you do? Did you quote from it? Did you show pictures? What is the book that you have uh, found to be the easiest to distribute? <laughs> I, you really want to know the answer to that question, huh? Well, <laughs> it wasn't one of Prabhupada's books. It was um, a book produced by Kirtananda Swami when I was distributing books for New Vrindavan back in the 70s, 80s, in the early 80s. That was, that was one of the easiest book. But when I, with Prabhupada's books, I think the, the one of the, the books that were that was the most interesting was um, let's see what is the name of that book. It's a paperback book, and it's very thick. Uh, hmm. It's about three hundred page paperback book. It's a very thick book. Uh, <laughs> I it, forgot the name of it. Is it Science of Self-Realization? Huh? Science of Self-Realization? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Science of Self-Realization. That book we we found it was the most easiest to distribute. Science of Self-Realization, yeah. How, how did you do this? Did you show the pictures? What did you say? The mantra? Or what, what, what did you say? <laughs> Um, well, I did a lot of those books through, through the jails. We found that that, you know, so that was mostly mail order books. But when I was distributing on the streets, I was mostly finding that I was distributing that book by Kirtananda Swami. And we also tried to distribute, uh, um, 
um, Bhagavad Gita. So uh, when I first started doing book distribution, it was small books and Bhagavad Gita mostly. And the small books were uh, coming back. That was a very easy book to distribute, coming back. Uh, and another one was, um, uh, what was that book? Uh, Who Has Higher Taste, which was a combination philosophy book and cookbook. And uh, yeah, Beyond Birth and Death, that was also. We did a lot of small books, at least I did anyway. But Prabhupada wanted us to distribute Bhagavad Gita. He said, he said, book distribution means big books. Mm -hmm. You can carry small books with you. And when people don't take the big books, you can uh, make it, give them an alternative by paying less for a small book. At least they get some book. But book distribution really means, I didn't spend a lot of time in book distribution. I was doing mostly other services. Or whatever little bit of a book distribution I did was you know, centered around these smaller books and mostly in some of Kirtananda Swami's books at the time. He had written a book called Joy of No Sex, <laughs> which, is, which was a kind of like a contrary to one book that was put out on the secular market called Joy of Sex. So he wrote the book Joy of No Sex which was an interesting book. People liked that one. And How to Say No to Drugs. That was another paperback by him. Uh, but then we would distribute Prabhupada's small books sometimes. Mostly Coming Back was the, easy, the easiest book. But I didn't do a lot of book distribution. So I'm not the person you could say that, you know, is a, was a seasoned book distributor. I mostly did other services. But in the same way, I was very supportive, like you were, uh, trying to support the book distribution team in different ways like that. Okay. So next question, uh, should we, when we distribute books, talk about Krishna openly? Or should we cover it up like Mula Prakriti did? Well, it depends on the person. <laughs> you have to see how much open they are. Generally, we don't get into Krishna because it becomes a little controversial. Then you have to sit there and explain. And if you say just one thing that causes doubt, then you, you, you might lose the whole thing. I think it's better just to explain how the benefits of reading these books and the knowledge it is that these are ancient books this knowledge goes back thousands and thousands of years it uh, it's coming from great great minds who are great saints you can use different you know ways to interest people in the books uh, speaking about Krishna directly, I, unless they bring it up, then I would suggest to you don't present that as a way to, you know, give them the book. Book distribution, you have to come up with different ideas to see. Just sometimes you say, well, do you like to read? Like here's, here's a book that you know, it's interesting. It's a good bedtime book. You can read just before you go to sleep at night. You, you use different techniques to interest people. But you learn a little bit about the person when you're speaking. You can start to see how, what they're like a little bit, just enough so you can start talking in the right way. Okay, Maharaj, that's all the time that we have for today with St. Petersburg. Um, so the, 
that that's that's all the time they have because after this it's 10 30 there they're going for book distribution so now it's uh, 12 so they will uh, they will go now book oh, it's 12 o'clock yeah. yeah it's 12, it's 12 o'clock in russia so is there any uh, last words that you can say to send them off on their way yeah, know that uh, Krishna is with you when you go out there. Srila Prabhupada's with you, and you're not alone. And because they're with you, you are empowered to do this service. Just always be confident and always be enthusiastic. And know that you know you're going you're pleasing your spiritual master by doing this. It's a wonderful service, important service. Mm -hmm. So Maharaj, can you just say the words or blessings or something? Because you know, devotees usually ask for blessings for those kind of activities. Oh, blessings? Hmm. Okay. Um, blessings come from the great souls, and I can just repeat the blessings that uh, the more you. Uh, are enthusiastic the more you'll get the blessings <laughs> the blessings are available there's unlimited blessings but what is that blessings the enthusiasm the empowerment the uh, the joy of distributing books it's a very joyful experience it doesn't have to be like well and one of the things just if you're happy and people see you're happy. That's a bet. That's one of the nicest ways to distribute books. Try to be happy when you're out there. Maharaj, thank you so much for making so much time for us. Thank you. And uh, I will report to you back how many books they have distributed today after your wonderful talk. Thank you so much. We hope to see you again soon. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Vlavanga. Vlavanya. My obeisance is to you and all the devotees. Hare Krishna. So thank you, Levang Lavta Mataji. <clears throat> so Guru Maharaj, should we close the call now or yeah? Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. So thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Jai. Ki pasinu ve bacha pitanam pavane bhyo. Vaishnavi pavanam 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 p